Welcome to another Tech Tips video from Learn Electrics. When we measure ZS, the earth fault loop impedance, with a test meter, we have a number displayed that we can compare to the charts in the on site guide. But what does this actually mean to us? Where do these numbers come from? They are not randomly plucked from the air, they have been calculated with the safety of persons in mind. For this session, we will be using the 18th edition wiring regs, often called the regs, and the 18th edition on-site guide, often shortened to OSG. If we look in the on-site guide, page 131, we will find table B6 for ZS values. The values in this and neighbouring tables will sometimes be called the 80% values or the measured values. They will give us the maximum measured earth fault loop impedance for a particular breaker or fuse. So what does that mean? How should an electrician use this information? And why are there different values and which one should be used? You should already be familiar with how to measure ZS and you should also know the parts of the circuit that the term ZS applies to. If not, look it up on one of our other Learn Electrics videos after watching this one. Let's look a little more into table B6 in the on-site guide, so page 131. Here we wish to select a 32 amp type B BSEN 60898 circuit breaker. This is the most popular size and type for domestic ring circuits. So find type B along the left edge. Now find 32 amps along the top. Follow the yellow lines as shown on the slide and where the row and column cross we have a value given of 1.1 ohms. This is our ZS value. But wait, what else does the table tell us? At the top, it tells us it is a maximum measured value. In other words, after measuring the actual ZS with your meter, you can make a direct comparison to the tables. This figure has already been adjusted for voltage fluctuations and temperature variations we shall see in just a moment. If the reading on your meter is less than the value shown on the chart, then that is an acceptable reading. But where do these numbers come from? They are not just plucked out of the air. So let us start from the beginning and see where we end up. We will stay with our Type B 32 amp BSEN 60898 MCB. We can now look at page 59 in the Wiring Regs book and Table 41.1. It shows us that, during a fault, a TN final circuit with a nominal voltage over 120 volts AC and up to and including 230 volts AC should disconnect within 0.4 seconds. This is to protect persons and livestock from the dangers of electric shock and the manufacturers of these devices will design them to comply with a standard that states that the device must disconnect in less than 0.4 seconds if a fault current of a certain size passes through it. Different types and sizes of breaker will have different current requirements. So what about the size of the fault current? How do we know that? Look now at figure 3A4 in Appendix 3 of the Wiring Regulations. You will find this on page 370. This page is specifically for Type B circuit breakers and RCBOs. We are interested in the little chart on the right hand side. The chart heading tells us that this chart gives figures for any disconnection time between 0.1 seconds and 5 seconds. So our 0.4 second requirement fits neatly into this chart. Our circuit breaker is 32 amps in the left column and the right column tells us that this size of device 
needs 160 amps of fault current to pass through it in order to achieve this 0.4 second disconnection time. A little bit of maths now. If you have a calculator, by all means, do the calculation. The more you practice, the better you get. Ohm's law tells us that the resistance of a circuit is equal to the voltage of that circuit divided by the current in the circuit. We have shown here the familiar Ohm's law triangle. Inserting the two numbers that we know, we have 230 volts over 160 amps. We always use the nominal voltage for these calculations and not the actual measured voltage. The nominal voltage can be looked on as the standard voltage for that circuit, the figure quoted in tables and books. So 230 divided by 160 will give us 1.44 ohms. If the resistance is equal to or less than 1.44 ohms, then at least 160 amps of fault current will flow and the circuit will disconnect in 0.4 seconds or less. Perfect. Except for what will happen if the voltage drops below 230 volts. Electricity suppliers must supply electricity within a certain range of volts. If the voltage rises, then the current flowing will increase and that is good. More current will make the device operate more quickly. But if the voltage falls, then less current flows and that could mean that we do not achieve 0.4 seconds. As an example, and staying with our 32 amp breaker, if the voltage drops to 220 volts and the ZS impedance value stays the same, then only 153 amps will flow. Clearly not enough. Somebody or something may be in danger. To allow for voltage variations, the electricity supply regulations say we should use a minimum voltage factor called C min of 0 0.95. So let us recalculate our maximum ZS based on this 0 0.95 factor and we see that the new ZS figure is 1.37 ohms maximum. Because the voltage has gone down we have had to make the ZS lower too. Let's assume the voltage drops as low as 220 volts, which is highly unlikely in the UK, and see what happens. 220 volts divided by 1.37 ohms gives us a current of 160 amps. So our 32 amp breaker will still trip in accordance with the requirements for safety. Returning to table 41.3 on page 62 of the wiring regulations, C min is shown in note 1 below the table. Looking at our B-type 32 amp breaker, highlighted in red on this slide, we can see that 1.44 ohms multiplied by 0 0.95 gives us a new ZS maximum of 1.37 ohms. All the values in the tables have been adjusted for C min. Different size type B breakers will have different maximum ZS values. And different types of the same size circuit breaker will also have different ZS values. Here we can see that although the size remains the same at 32 amps, the different types B, C, D all have different maximum ZS values. Looking at pages 61 to 63 in the wiring regs book, we can see many types of breaker and fuse have different disconnection times for final and distribution circuits. Again, these have all been adjusted for a C-min of 0 0.95. Because they are listed in a table in the book, they are sometimes called tabulated values. They have come from a table in the regs book. When looking up values of ZS in the tables, it is so very important that you use the correct table for your answers. The same size fuse may appear in both tables for different disconnection times and the ZS will be different in each case. So we have covered voltage variations. What about changes in temperature? What happens 
to the fault current flowing if the copper conductor warms up, either from large currents flowing through it or from a change in the ambient air temperature. For example, if the cable is installed in a summer conservatory where the sun is directly on it or the room temperature rises to say 45 degrees centigrade, then clearly something is going to happen. The reference temperature for our cables is 20 degrees centigrade. If the temperature of the cable increases for any reason, then the resistance of that cable will increase in proportion to the increase in temperature. Going back to Ohm's law, a rise in resistance causes a reduction in current. We are back to our problem again of not having enough fault current to cause the device to operate in the specified time. The regulations also say that we should not allow the cable to exceed 70 degrees centigrade, so we only need to cover the range from 20 degrees to 70 degrees. The solution is to reduce the resistance of our circuit ZS even further, what we call the 80% rule. Staying with our Type B 32 amp breaker, if we know that at 70 degrees the resistance should not exceed 1.37 ohms, then we can work backwards from 1.37 and find a value of resistance for a temperature of 20 degrees that guarantees that even at 70 degrees we will still have 160 amps of fault current. The factor to use to achieve this is 0 0.8. In other words, only use 80% of the 1.37 ohms. 1.37 multiplied by 0 0.8 gives us a new and finished value of 1.1 ohms. What we call the measured value. A quick recap then. On site, we will measure the ZS with our meter and we can compare this to the tables given in the on-site guide directly. The maximum ZS figures in the on-site guide have all been adjusted for voltage fluctuations and for temperature changes. It will be a direct comparison. If the value measured is less than that shown in the on-site guide, then that circuit has passed that test and we should be confident that the circuit will disconnect as required during an earth fault. Thank you for watching this video from Learn the Electrics. Please give us a like below and click on the subscribe button to have access to all of our Tech Tips videos. And clicking subscribe also helps us too. Typing in Learn the Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to the videos. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you again very soon.